بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسوله صدق الله العظيم Dear listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing humanity for what we are speaks to the believers, those who have brought iman, Islam, recite la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. It says, ya ayuhu alladheena amanu, aminu billahi wa rasulih. Oh, those who have brought iman, those who believe, believe in Allah and his apostle Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he knows definitely that لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Why do you say and preach that we you do not practice yourselves? That we say something and mean another. And that يَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ They utter with their mouths what is not embedded and accepted in their hearts. This is what they do and we do sometimes. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفُ Allah says and man has been created weak and so many temptations around us that we usually bow down to those temptations and we forget about Allah and of course Allah is all forgiving all merciful and most of us sometimes fall into this pitfall but the basis of everything is the education that we get as Muslims from early childhood and Iqbal had a look at it and he was not happy he was not happy in 1924 25, he wrote a letter to one of his friends telling that he is not happy, especially with those places that are churning out this, at that time, ulama. Quite a lot of them were more or less on the side of the rulers. They make the slaves accept slavery. They present slavery in such glorious language and terms and pictures that the Muslims look forward to become slaves. They don't go to the Quran and tell you, no, we do not accept any type of tyranny and hegemony and we don't want to be trampled because Allah has created everyone free and has honored every son and daughter of Adam. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. Allah says, and every son and daughter of Adam have we given decorum and dignity and personality and individuality. But these people, they have come from somewhere. As someone has said that they have fine-tuned the priesthood in Islam. We left some sort of priesthood even in Makkah and Medina. Of course, you saw the false prophets that came after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They came to Persia and then they took some. They met the Christians and they had the padres and the popes and the predicants. And then along the way, we find that as the Muslims came, they started, instead of throwing out these things, in the light of the Holy Quran, we started accepting some of those because they were not from the Prophet. They had profit in it. A, prof, a, a priesthood is one of the most profitable, profitable businesses 
in the world. You can see, put on your DSTV, TV, and see all the different churches that have got so much funds that they are broadcasting their religion and asking for funds and getting richer and richer and acting in a way which is far from that great, great, mighty messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, whom they call Jesus Christ. So some of us, we also thought, that, no, why must they run away with this type of thing? Why can't we even cash in? But Islam has got no root, no, no, no room for priesthood. As Allah Iqbal tells us, bluntly, a Musliman, apne dil se pooch, mullah se na pooch. O Muslim, ask your heart and conscience, don't ask that priest. Don't ask that mullah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what is taqwa? What is purity? What is true iman? A taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here. It proceeds from your heart and the purity of your heart and the sincerity of your heart. But we are, as Iqbal says, that you are in the clutches of the Sufi and the mullah. The banda is Sufi or mullah asiri. And he wants us to move away from that. And in that way, he tries to tell the Muslim youth what they must do. Because our hope lies in the scholars of our ummah, the true scholars. Not the scholars for dollars, as somebody usually says. Who adorn our present and our promise of our future. We think that they adorn, but some of them, we know what, what they say. Like we saw in Egypt, that the Sheikh Al-Azhar is sitting there and deposing the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood government. And the Sheikh Al-Azhar is keeping quiet. And lately, that sentence has been passed by the Mufti of Egypt. That sentence on Muslim brothers, brothers. Instead of saying, let's go and let's have a case and let us see. No, they immediately. As you know, nowadays they say you get your fatwa according to your batwa. The size of your purse, you will get Allah's curse for giving that particular fatwa. So that our youth are our future. And if you make scholars of them, that they will enlighten the minds of everyone with the essence of Islam and great values in order that they may not slide along the paths of ignorance, corruption, narrow-mindedness, and subordination. Yes, we don't want to be in any way subordinated because we don't want to be in the clutches of anybody and we don't want to accept slavery. And of course, Iqbal must have taken this from Hali. He says, Alim hai so be aql hai, jahil hai so wahshi, Munim hai so maghroor hai, and muslif, uh, musrif so gada hai, muflis so gada hai. He says, the one who calls himself learned, he has hardly got any intelligence. And the one who has not got any in intelligence or knowledge, then you will find that he is like a barbarian. And the one who is rich, you find that he is arrogant, worse than Iblis. And the one who is poor, he has accepted thraldom and slavery and subjugation. So he says, no, you can't. It is, inshallah, our scholars who can illuminate for them the avenues of tolerance, moderation, and virtue, and prevent them from falling into the abyss of extremism, fanaticism, and everything that is destructive as far as spirit and body are concerned. So therefore, Allah Iqbal does not make a dichotomy between Islam and politics. Islam, everything is intertwined. Because Allah taught us everything. Allah al Quran, Allah al Insan, ma lam yalam. Allah taught man everything that he did not know. And there is no religious and secular in Islam. Everything is for the sake of Allah. And that is why we have to give a, a type of education that we are not blinded. blinded. Like he was during his time, he cried out for at the institutions that were producing certain types of ulama. 
اسے شکایت ہے مجھے یارب خدا وندان مکتب سے کہ سبق شاہی بچوں کو دے رہے ہیں خاک بازی کا آئی ہیو اے سیریس کمپلینٹ او اللہ اگینسٹ دیز انسٹیٹیوشنز دا چرن آؤٹ دیز علما بیکاز دیز انسٹیٹیوشنز ٹیک اوور لٹل ایگلٹس اینڈ دے پروگرام دیم اینڈ دے کنڈیشن دیم ٹو گریول ان دا مک مایا اینڈ ڈسٹ لائک بلائنڈ مائس Muslim little boys are little eaglets. They are supposed to soar high after they have developed the wings, but the wings are chopped off, the eyes are blinded. That is how I, uh, Iqbal has spoken in such, such terrible terms. And he said, when Ataturk was getting rid of some of the ulama, Iqbal was not happy, but he said that I find that the stupidity of the Indian Muslim is due to these teachers that they have from these Darul Ulums. He said that. But therefore we can change. And Allah is prepared to help us change. And we ask Allah to change so that each of our youth, Allah will give them balo par, he will give them the wings to soar high and in order to glorify Islam in every nook and corner of the earth. على النبي الكريم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وفي العز للعبد المليل تبلغ بالقليل من القليل يوم القليل من القليل وأي السادة للسفر الطويل وأي السادة وفي عصيانه عار ونار وفي عصيانه